Welcome to the game of life. Your mission objective, get off of autopilot when you are in social situations so that you can be present, that you can be mindful and you can allow social interactions to flow smoothly and effortlessly so that ultimately you can be your best social self. If you're anything like me, you may feel as though your brain is constantly, as mentioned, on autopilot. It's doing whatever the hell it wants, right? It's going off in this direction, in that direction. And some days it honestly feels as though you have zero control over how to work your own damn brain. And that's kind of scary, man. And when you do find yourself in social situations with other people that you are trying to have nice conversations with, this is really not the brain and the kind of brain behavior that you need to navigate the situation as smoothly and effectively as possible. And we all know that a never ending brain, a brain that doesn't shut the hell up, <laughs> tends to make us nervous. It tends to make us overthink situations, which ultimately makes us put pressure on ourselves, which ultimately makes us come across as very robotic and very stressed and very unnatural. And when you're in the midst of a social situation and your mind is just racing at a thousand miles per hour, you can't calm down. You can't relax and breathe and just settle yourself into that situation. And you tend to feel extremely overwhelmed, which is not fun at all. And if you're a real weirdo like me, sometimes you find yourself in a conversation with somebody and they are saying words at you, but instead of being there and really listening and taking in whatever the content of their message might be at the time, your brain is already 10,000 steps ahead thinking about the perfect thing to say. If only I just find that beautifully funny and witty comeback, right? If only I just had the science back up right now that I could show this person that I know what I'm talking about. I'm an expert. I just want this to go so perfectly. So I must naturally think 20 steps ahead. And that, as you already know, is a shocking recipe <laughs> for a nice, enjoyable conversation because you're not there and your brain is just messing you around. Because the sad truth is that your brain, as misguided as it is, is like a child that just wants to help you, right? It thinks that what it's doing is being of great service to you, but all it's doing is actually making the situation 10,000 times worse. And I'm sure you know that by now. If you're new to the game of life, welcome. My name is Niall Higgins, and I went from playing video games to playing the beautiful game of life. I literally went from being the most awkward, shy, and just embarrassing kid <laughs> who was struggling with Tourette syndrome to giving speeches around the world, to helping other people develop their social skills and self-development, but most importantly, building lifelong, incredible and fulfilling relationships. Let me tell you something, if I could do it, you can do it too. And to do this, I'm gonna share a very simple and very powerful framework or strategy with you today that's gonna help you finally overcome this nervousness so that you can finally be totally present in whatever social situation you find yourself in so that you could start to be considered the social savage at all the parties. To be a quote unquote social savage, you need two things. You need relaxation and you need presence. My framework is called the PAPER framework. Here's how this very simple but powerful acronym of PAPER will serve you. Whenever you find yourself in a situation when you feel overwhelmed, stressed, your mind is racing, all you need to do is stop whatever you're doing, remind yourself to follow this powerful acronym, and I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step of what each letter stands for. I literally do this every single day, multiple times a day, and I cannot explain the amount of peace, the amount of self-control, and the amount of enjoyment I experience as a result of grounding myself in the moment and realizing what is truly important. The first P stands for pause and breathe, right? If you're a dude, sorry to be so crude, that rhymed, <laughs> but I actually like to say pause and breathe into your balls, right? And this just ensures that you are breathing as deeply as you possibly can. Because most of us, if you're willing to be honest, are shallow breathers. We're nose and mouth breathers, right? We sit every day and we go, <sighs> maybe not that obviously, but our breathing is shallow and it's terrible for our functioning, for our health and for our mindset and for our relaxation, which as I'll remind you, was the first key tenet to this process. So what I actually like to do for this step is literally take a step back. This kind of signifies that I am literally taking a step back from my life to take a moment to just come back to myself, pause and breathe. All the way down and then out. 
And you can do this one time, you can do this three times, do it as many times as you need for you to literally tell your own brain that you are taking a step out of the game. It's almost as though the bell is rang in a boxing match and you as the boxer are taking a step back to reassess the situation, to come back to yourself and to your coach and to relax so that you can approach the next moment the best way you can. Let me tell you that if you just simply focus on your breathing as consciously and often as you possibly can, your life will transform. So if you're one of those people that think, oh, breathing is like so lame, we all breathe anyways, just do this. And I promise you now, it's gonna be like night and day for you. The next step is A, which stands for awareness. And more specifically, awareness of the present moment. Everything that's going on outside of you, but not only that, but the things that are going on inside of yourself too, and in your own body. When you become present in your own physical reality, you firstly remind yourself that this situation is safe. Right now, there is nothing currently going wrong in my life. Because the truth is, if there was a crisis situation on hand, you wouldn't have time to pause for this framework. So the very fact that you stopped taking a breath and have allowed yourself to be in the present moment signifies to you and to your brain subconsciously that you're safe and that you can relax and come back to yourself and breathe. If this is difficult for you in the beginning, because it definitely can be, right? If you're not used to inhabiting the present moments of your life, try listing all five of your senses. Look around you and ask yourself, what do I see? What do I hear? What can I smell? What can I touch? And what can I taste, right? Just doing those five little checkpoints will really show you that it's actually not that hard to come back to the present moments. Already at this stage of the game, you'll feel so much more peaceful and so much more in control of the mind wandering and the panicking. You'll already notice that you are so much more present, so much more in the moment of that social interaction. And that could really be the only advice you need in order to calm yourself down. Another strategy is to mentally or even verbally ask yourself the question, what am I feeling inside right now? And can I allow this emotion to simply exist in my body? That question alone takes away the power over what emotion you are feeling at the current moment, whether that's anxiety, whether that's stress, whether that's the fear of saying something wrong. It really just allows you to sit and deal with that emotion as though it's something of a child that needs tending to, that needs care and love. And what happens when you usually give a child attention when they are upset or when you actually show them love and support and kindness when they're crying? the child tends to stop crying and actually comes back into the moment and suddenly forgets about all the drama that just happened five seconds ago. <laughs> you are literally doing the same for yourself. You're essentially self-parenting yourself. And this can be profoundly useful and effective. Speaking of kids, right? That brings us perfectly into step number three, which is the second P of this framework. And this P stands for ponder plans I like to add with your Padawan, right? If you're a Star Wars nerd like me, you'll know exactly what that means. But in simple human terms for the non-Star Wars nerds out here like me, this essentially means take a moment to plan with your younger self. And to do this, you're literally gonna visualize you standing with younger you. Sounds crazy, but I'll explain why this is so useful and effective. If you imagine that you are currently sitting in the present moment with a younger version of yourself, and you had to take a next step with whatever it was you are doing that day, whether that's deciding to go to the gym, to start working on that project. Maybe you're just deciding to kind of say, whatever, I'm not gonna go to that party tonight or that social situation. I'm gonna avoid all the negative feelings. And I'm just gonna do what I want. But instead you think to yourself, I'm with younger me right now. What would you do for the younger version of yourself in their best interests? If you were their parents and if you were gonna be a half decent parent, you would understand the fundamental truth that sometimes, making a child do what they don't wanna do, which is an activity that would benefit them in the long run, is something you have to do. Despite the, the cries of the child, despite the anxiety, despite the stress, you know as the parent or the higher version of yourself that by making yourself do the right things, even when they don't feel comfortable, this will lead to an outcome that you would ultimately want for your younger self. You never wanna see your younger self suffer or any child for that matter of fact. So a lot of the times I find that for me and many other people, when we consider the effects or the consequences of our own actions, we are very quick to kind of say, ah, oh, whatever, I'll suffer the consequences. Tomorrow, don't give a shit, right? No problem, it's tomorrow me's problem. But when you think about your younger self and you realize that everything you do right now will essentially lead to the outcome that younger you will experience or your child would experience as if you were a parent making those decisions, you suddenly become a lot more conscious of the decisions you are making. And this really allows you to be effective, to be smart, and to live true to what actually matters and not what you feel. Ponder plans with your younger self or ponder plans with your Padawan. May the force be with you. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> We've come to the second last letter, which is E, and this is kind of like a double barrel, but essentially it stands for envision and embody your highest self. This is kind of a follow on from the previous step. So with a little bit of time and practice, you could actually summarize P and E into kind of one little quick process that happens mentally in an instant. But while you're practicing this, I find it's incredibly useful to not only think about the younger version of you that needs to do the right things, but think about the kind of person that you want to embody, the future you, right? The person that gets shit done, the person that everybody looks at around you and thinks, wow, they really had a glow up, right? <laughs> they really are an inspiration and somebody that I would like to be like, but more importantly, somebody that you are proud to embody and to become. Todd Herman discusses this so well in his book, The Alter Ego Effect. Essentially, the premise of his argument is that if you so decide that you want to take on any quality, any trait, or any characteristic for yourself in any situation, whether that's social or otherwise, you can do that. Simply because we are humans think and are so stubborn as to believing that we are this person. This is our personality and we can never change. But here's the question I have for you today. Have you ever been confident in a situation even though you are technically a shy person? Have you ever been angry with a friend or with your spouse even though you've been known by all of your friends to be a very calm and placid human being? Have you ever done something a little bit unethical? Something a little bit wrong? Even though you, you do know deep down that you are a person with good morals, good values, good ethics, right? But you still did these things, unfortunately, maybe because of situation or circumstance. This should prove to you, or at least prove Herman's theory that you as a human being can take on whatever characteristic you need in whatever moment you find yourself in. If you are in need of confidence, the trick is not to think to yourself, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, all these affirmations and nonsense like that, right? The trick is to actually envision somebody that you look up to and respect and almost take on that version of them inside yourself. Or alternatively, you could think about what is the highest version of me that I could imagine? The version of me that has the confidence, that has the values, the respect, the authenticity. And you can decide right now whether or not to embody your higher self or if you'll just stay on autopilot. The catch is you don't have to be him or her in the future. You could be them right now but only if you choose to do so. If you can come up with another little acronym of what would so-and-so do or what would my highest version of myself do, it could be so effective and so useful to you. And finally, without further ado, the final stage of this framework is the R, which simply stands for respond with resilience. This will remind you that no matter how much internal work you do, no matter how many breathing exercises you do or philosophies you consider or mindset shifts that you make, as much as we've just discussed how powerful those things can be, this will remind you at the end of the framework to snap out of it, come back to the reality that you are living in right now and to respond with resilience, to take action despite how you feel. Because the truth of life is that without taking action, without actually doing the things that go on inside of our heads, nothing happens, nothing gets done, and we stay exactly the same. Because you could sit and ponder confidence all day long. You could do breathing exercises that will calm you down. You can do all of the good stuff that I've mentioned beforehand. But here's the truth, friend. If you really want your social life to improve, if you really want to build the kind of confidence that you would be proud of, that you would want others to admire in you, you just gotta do the thing. You gotta do the things that you know you have to do despite how uncomfortable or awkward or stressed out they may make you feel in that moment. You know that if you wanna develop confidence, you have to start speaking to more people. If you wanna develop loving relationships, you have to be more vulnerable and more authentic with the people you love. And so a nice little catchphrase to remember along with this is ready, fire, aim, right? Take the action first, take the shot, see where you're off the mark and then make improvements thereafter. That is the most effective way to not only fix your social life, but to fix every aspect of your life that needs fixing. If you found value in this video today, please consider sharing this video with a friend who you might realize really needs this kind of advice right now in this stage of their life. And if all else fails, ask yourself the question, if life was a game, how would I play?